guys, Perry Bird here. Today I want to look at the early works of Haruki Murakami. It's October, you know, that time of year when Murakami always comes to mind. This book I picked up from, well, I special ordered from Walden Books back in the day. Uh, and it was enjoyable. This book is, you know, well, I wouldn't say enjoyable. I mean, it was okay. It was actually quite terrible. <laughs> but, but yeah, this is... um inspired by like the detective genre and uh like raymond raymond chandler um you know which makes sense because he was translating a bunch of uh, american writers at the time and so yeah this <laughs> but a book of his that i really want to look at was not yet available in english this was published in japan late 80s and I remember going to uh, San Francisco, staying in Japantown. They had this huge bookstore still um, called Kinokiniya. And I remember seeing this on the shelves over there. This was translated by Birnbaum, who was one of uh, the two main Murakami translators at the time. And I really liked Birnbaum's translations because he kind of did this quirky, casual, cool voice that I really just associate it with Murakami's work, but uh, come to find out, Murakami, I think he writes more in the way that Rubin translates him. It's a little bit more detached and distant. Um, you can kind of compare the translations in, let's say, um, the Wind Up Bird Chronicles version, which is a short story, versus the novel that appeared later. Um, but yeah, I remember reading this collection. I was so excited to find this. It seems so rare and uh, super enjoying this one. This is very a very accessible read. And he started appearing in these magazines over here, and I think it was 893 when uh, these this collection came out, The Elephant Vanishes. Really liked this one. This is very, uh, also very whimsical, uh, enjoyable, playful sh short stories. One of these, I would read a lot, this one. Um, it's kind of like an antidepressant in a way. Uh, but yeah, Murakami was living in America at the time. I think he just got through living in Greece with his wife, you know, kind of to avoid the celebrity that he was achieving over in Japan. And uh, word came down that he was going to come to our university over here to give a talk. And I was super excited. I went over to that lecture hall uh, that night and sat in among the, I don't know, 15 or 20 people in the audience. Uh, and yeah, just he was talking about like his issues translating um, American writers, and it was a little bit hard to understand what he was saying because his English wasn't so great at the time. And uh, these girls in the back, I think they were like Japanese groupies, they were asking him questions at the end of the talk, and you just couldn't understand what they were saying at all. But um, after the after the talk, he was going to sign some books over at this bookstore called Europa Books, which. Uh, was on on the drag. It doesn't exist anymore, but yeah, they had a really good uh, eclectic selection of books. But I kind of had this run-in, well, not run-in, but um, just this bad relationship with that bookstore because I would posted on this news group, I think it was alt.books at the time, uh, this question about, like, what is the best way to steal a book from a bookstore? Because that was something that I did in high school, you know, from like, Walden books, I would take books and stick it down my shorts and just bolt <laughs> and got this huge, huge adrenaline rush by doing that. Uh, I read a lot of John, <laughs> John Updike that way, <laughs> but, but yeah, but they started putting in these, um, uh, magnetic strips into the books. And, uh, uh, so I didn't want the alarm to go off and me get caught with a freaking John Updike book in my pants. So I asked this question and the owner of um, Europa Books saw my post and he got super mad. He was like, if I ever see you in our bookstore, you'll get kicked out and banned, whatever. And I was like, okay. Um, uh, I, I did get a little bit scared going into the store. They didn't recognize me, of course, but um, yeah, he was, Murakami was uh, at a table sitting down to sign some of his books. This one just came out. Um, this is a sequel to a wild sheep chase and he was really cool you know i talked about this in some of the other videos having this trepidation about you know getting to you know have some face time with the actual writer because i kind of worship them um but murakami was really relaxed and i kind of thought of him as like this uh cool uncle or older brother uh, type of person but um 
Yeah, there was a, uh, you know, when you're in those situations, you can't help but uh, eagerly eavesdrop at the conversations that are taking place before you in line. And the guy in front of me was, um, he told Murakami, like, yeah, The Hartwell Wonderland and the End of the World, that's the best book I've ever read. And <laughs> Murakami had, like, no reaction to that at all. Um, and so I had my question prepared. I was going to ask him about Norwegian wood, uh, like... Um, so yeah, when's Norwegian wood coming out in English? And he was like, oh, it takes a very long time to translate a book into English. And I was like, well, I was thinking in my mind that it's already been translated by Birnbaum. I didn't really let on that I'd already read it. Um, but, and it was weird because it didn't come out until like five to 10 years later. And when it did come out, it was translated by Ruben. Uh, but yeah, uh, got this, uh, book signed Murakami, the w one thing that I remembered about it was that there's something odd about the eye contact. And it, it, it's probably more on my side or in my imagination, but I kind of thought in, he was looking more down at my nose or my mouth. And I got super self-conscious because I had this really prominent facial scar at the time. Um, I mean, I still have it, but it's not as pronounced. But uh, yeah, and I was thinking maybe um, he was re he was writing... Wind Up Bird Chronicles at the time, and there's a scene in this book about a character with a facial scar, and I was thinking, oh, later that maybe he was just pondering that scene when when he was looking at me, but you know, I, it might have been all in my imagination. I also have this like lazy eye condition, <laughs> but um, but yeah, it was uh, it was really really awesome to to see him, and it it surprises me that he comes up in the conversation like every October. Um, at this point, you know, I haven't read a whole lot of his books after these works here. I did read Kafka on the Shore, which which I enjoyed a lot. But um, but yeah, that's the memory, guys. Uh, I think I'll do one more of these uh, videos in this series. And thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a good day and we'll see you on the next video.